Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly roundup of stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin-Smith, and coming up, we head to Ivory Coast to talk the talk. Nucci, the local Creole, is so widely spoken that it's even got some words into one of France's most famous dictionaries. Also, rights campaigners in Nigeria are pushing for the end to a practice where young girls are sold off to older men to clear their family's debts. Campaigners against these so-called money marriages say that they amount to slavery. And our correspondents head to the north of Paris to hear some of the stories of those living in the shadows of the City of Light. In the suburbs, thousands of migrants live in makeshift tents. We speak to some of the many Eritreans struggling to get by there. But first, although French is Ivory Coast's official language, more and more people are comfortable using the local Creole of Nucci. Its reach has grown so much that next year's edition of France's famous La Petite La Rousse Dictionary will feature its second Nucci word. A boucantier is an ostentatious show-off. Our reporters in Abidjan went to brush up on the local lingo. In Abidjan, you'll hear Nucci either as the odd word dropped in or as full-blown conversation. It's a mix of French, English and local languages such as Baule, and everyone's got their favourite words. Whether you're winning time, having a jar, or spending che instead of argent, it adds a richness to standard French. The way it's spoken changes from district to district and across the country, and it's constantly evolving, a source of pride among its younger speakers. If the word boucantier gets into the French dictionary, then that's a real coup for us Ivorians. I'm thrilled. Nushi surfaced in the mid-1980s and was largely spread through the emergence of the Zouglou musical style, of which the group Magic System is the prime example. First spoken in the slums, Nushi can now be heard everywhere via online radio, Bish FM. Côte d'Ivoire, il y a eu un Niaga entre Abé et puis le Dioula à Beauville. Un vrai bang bang. The presenter is discussing, in Nushi, the intercommunity tensions in certain parts of Ivory Coast, something he sees as a public service. Les autorités, les ministres et autres. The French spoken by officials and ministers is so formal. You can't be sure that people will actually understand it. So what we try to do is relay that information. Nushi is being taken ever more seriously. In fact, it's a research subject at the country's largest university. It's now so widespread, it's even influencing politicians. You'll see that multinationals are having to be up to speed with Nucci for their advertising messaging. So you can say the phenomenon is gaining ground and there's no way of knowing where it's going to take us. Constantly evolving, Nushi is not yet considered a language in its own right. But it's already becoming a clear marker of identity in one of French-speaking Africa's most thoroughly French-speaking countries. Now, despite a ban on the practice, families in southern Nigeria are still settling debts by selling off younger girls to older men. The girls' lives often then follow a depressingly predictable pattern. Kept out of education, many end up pregnant at a young age in circumstances that campaigners say amount to slavery. France 24's Anna Cunningham tells us more. The Beshev community has a long-standing tradition. Dorothy was married off to clear a family debt when she was about seven. Now, at 25, she's expecting her sixth child. She recalls how adults pinned her down so her new husband could sleep with her. If it wasn't for God, I would have killed myself. That someone pinned me down so he could have sex with me. I can't forget that. But because of God, I try to forget. But I used to think, what kind of marriage is this? Few acknowledge what happened to Dorothy as child rape. But increasingly, the women here are recognizing this practice, albeit outlawed, is unacceptable. Many have sought support through their church. Tradition is a deep part of society here. Making money marriage this way of using young girls as currency, a difficult subject to talk openly about. Here in Bicheve, generally people have no respect for women. But I live here. They know me. They have seen me. 
They know what kind of a person I am. You know they're very spiritual, so they trust me, and I can speak for them. Dorothy worries if something happens to her, then her daughters too could be sold off. Her husband, the same man who married her age seven, has promised he will look after them. His views on their marriage have changed. What I did does bother me. I should never have done it, you understand? If you bought me a young girl to marry now, a money woman, I would not do it. Nigeria has signed laws to protect children, but putting an end to this tradition of child marriage for money to pay off debts is harder to break. Now, Nigeria has one of the world's highest kidnap for ransom rates. From insurgents in the northeast to bandits in the northwest to militants in the oil-rich south and criminal gangs in Lagos, all kinds of groups around the country regularly turn to abductions for cash. Authorities are trying to beef up their response to the nationwide security threat. Our team reports. The Lagos Anti-Kidnapping Squad, formed over a decade ago, patrols the streets trying to avert kidnappings. But it's an operation that has been criticised for poor logistics and a lack of manpower, alongside a wider mistrust in the police, an image they want to change. We want the people to have confidence in the police, believe in the police and uh, continue to trust us. As soon as you have certain information, involve us at the initial stage. stage. We have all it takes to respond uh, accordingly. Over the years, wealthy Nigerians, businessmen, foreigners and politicians have all been targets. Kidnapping for ransom is a lucrative business and rarely is it spontaneous. People don't just go and kidnap this person. These people work based on information. They know, most times they know who they want to kidnap, they know why they want to kidnap the person. But yes, that's random for the sake of money or other reasons, or even for political reasons. Running a security business across 36 states was not how Roy envisaged his retirement from the army. But his expertise has kept him in demand. Now he wants a tougher approach. We need to immediately create a legal system that will not take through the rigmarole of all these judicial processes. It will get evidence and initiate justice within the shortest time. That will help us. The death penalty for kidnapping exists in several states, yet abductions continue. Security remains one of the biggest issues President Buhari has to face as he starts his second term in office. In eastern DR Congo, attacks by various rebel groups that operate around the city of Beni have made it much harder to contain the world's second biggest outbreak of Ebola. It's the first time that the disease has struck in a conflict zone. The number of cases recently topped 2,000, and over 1,300 people have died since the outbreak began last August. The bad news came from the headquarters of the World Health Organization in Geneva. There have now been more than 2,000 Ebola cases reported in eastern Congo. Rebel attacks and community resistance have hurt containment efforts, according to the WHO. Every time uh, there is a security uh, incident, we are not able to provide services and go into, into community. We are not able to vaccinate. We are not able to treat those who are ill. We are not able to follow up on those who may have been exposed uh, to, 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 the, to the virus. Here in Butembo, a Cameroonian doctor was killed last month by militiamen. Security has now been boosted. The rebels can attack hospitals or set fire to them. So we have put in two fences around the building now. And there are police officers around the hospital. So now the community is less afraid of coming here. The number of confirmed cases reached the 2,000 milestone three times as quickly as it took to reach 1,000. The outbreak was declared in August. It's the second deadliest in history. So far, it has killed more than 1,300 people. The WHO did mention some signs of progress. It said more than 129,000 people have received an experimental but effective Ebola vaccine in its first widespread use. Here in Paris, a sea of tents has sprung up around the edges of the north of the city. Many there have struggled through horrific journeys to make it to Europe and live in dire conditions in one of the richest cities on the continent. 
Nicola Schumer and Sadia Manjo spoke to some Eritreans staying under the Parisian flyover. In 2015, many refugees and migrants were living in central Paris under the railway. In 2018, they had to move under this bridge on the edge of the capital. In 2019, they are still further out by the noisy and polluted ring road, where no residents will complain about their presence. The trend is clear, always further away from the city centre. Here, Port d'Aubervilliers, on the border between Paris and the poor northern suburbs, there are many Eritreans. They have fled a country where the same president has ruled a one-party regime for nearly three decades. The refugees live next to piles of rubbish in a makeshift camp. Look here. It's very dirty. We sleep here. One person will sleep here. This, this animal does not sleep here. Animal. All the Eritreans we met had fled via Libya and then reached Italy in frail boats before coming to France. Some of them have been given temporary papers, but they still end up here and they have lost all hope. The French government is inhumane. Frankly, it's better if they send me back to Eritrea. I don't want to die here. It's better if I can die where my family is. French authorities said they had already provided lodgings or dormitories for 2,000 migrants since January. But economic misery and violation of human rights in many countries means Europe is still attractive. Last year, the official number of asylum seekers in the Paris region went up by 63%. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks very much for joining us and do so again if you can. Take care.